All right, I am here with Eli Cassis. Uh, he is playing a deck that has been a staple in Legacy for the past couple of years now. It's uh, the the land deck, 43 land. Yeah. So um, let's see. Uh, let's for those of you guys who are uninitiated with the deck, basically the way it works is there are a series of cards that help you get extra lands into play or allow you to go searching for lands, and then a ton of lands that do interesting things. And you can see Richardson Port here, Misha's Factory, Wasteland. Uh, there's this nifty little package down here that we'll get into in a moment. It's just a bunch of little silver bullet lands that all perform various functions and like maze of it to keep locking things down. Um, these yes, in the Teleria West to go search. Um, let, let's see, let's just start walking through. Um, how does the deck kill, first of all? Because lands uh, aren't generally known for their ability to kill people unless they animate. It's funny they ask that. It doesn't kill. <laughs> <laughs> Worm Harvest and Mistress Factories can be a late game in kill conditions. Mm -hmm. I went with Worm Harvest, some people play Mind Slaver. Okay. I thought the Mind Slaver lock was just too inconsistent and overcasted. Okay. And there are games where sometimes I just cast this on turn three thanks to an exploration fetches and cracking lands. Okay. And this actually becomes a serious threat that they can't deal with. Yeah. The deck runs so many lands that you can just keep retracing. I, I'd say I only did that two or three times in the last day. Okay. But I just chose it over Mindsaver because I my friend runs Mindsaver and I didn't see him do it once. Gotcha. Successfully at least. Yeah. So if generally you get them into a lock they can't get out of exactly. and then at that point it's only a moment of time. Hitting their lands is the most important thing. Yeah. I start off with Wastelands if they play non basics. Okay. If they play basics, I try to port the basics. Weird. And as soon as I get the recursion of life alone with an exploration, I start ghost quartering a basic. Okay. Until they're out of basics. That's so that point. The goal is to get them to have no mana to play anything. And then from there you're free to do whatever you like. Okay. You have the Camry Ruins, it's another win condition. It stops you from drowning by just recurrently putting an artifact on top. Okay. So you can make them run out of cards first. Okay. Also, with engineering explosives and a Camry Ruins, you can kill off all their board once all their mana's gone. So as long as you're not dying, you're all set. All right. The not dying cards are all about Maze of Iths and Tabernacle. Tabernacle stops them from having too many threats, and Maze of Iths stops the few threats that they have. Nice little combo together. Yeah. Looks like you've got the Glacial Chasm here also to help buy time to get some of the really aggressive this decks. Is, this is important against any burn spells, and it also locks down some players. Frequently, you're going to go for a Zern Orb, Glacial Chasm, and have Life from Alone. And this will just be a lockdown, because you'll play it, you'll pay two life once, and then next turn you'll sack it to Zern Orb, and then bring it back with life from the long, and then play it again. Yeah. It doesn't cost you any land drops, it costs you equal land drops. So you just stay where you are in terms of lands, mm -hmm. and you stay as where you are in terms of life, too. So right. they're just done attacking you. And if they have burn and you have Zern Orb, you don't really care much either. Right. With an exploration out, it becomes that you get to actually get your land drop back. And at that point you start pulling ahead. And the reason you lose a land drop is this makes you sack away. Right. Uh, Riftstone Portal, so when that you're dredging. Judge Matt yep. It's really good because it lets Maze of it, Glacial Chasm, add mana. Which is pretty useful considering that's one of the dead things about exactly. the deck. Exactly. I just, I just lost a match where if I had hit this one alone, I would have won instead of lost. Yeah. It's that big sometimes. I was actually considering running two. Okay. Some decks run a main deck form on script. I decided to go with a Jukabog instead. Okay. It's easier. It still gets with Teleria West. It still comes back with Life of Alone. And I can currently use it with Wasteland without having the, have the Academy Ruins lock. Because I can just do it with the low. Right. So I just determined that that would be the better way to go. Okay. Um, let's see. So the deck, you're looking in your... What are you looking for in your opening draw with this kind of deck? Uh, you're looking for one of these. And basically, if you don't have Life of Long, you want Intuition to get Life of Long. Okay. Because it's obviously the power to the deck. It's almost an ancestral recall every turn when you bring back three lands and using them. Especially because all of your lands do things for the most part. Exactly. And then you really want Acceleration, one of these 12. You've got Mox Diamonds there, your Explorations, and then and Mana Bond, which is played in no deck other than this one. It's, it's a phenomenal card in this, too, because I mean, you literally, since over half of your deck is lands. When you get to activate that card, you're putting a ton of lands into play. And e even the cards that generally will go away in those situations are, I mean, if you have to discard a card, it's a lot of times going to be a life from the loan, which you're fine with going to the graveyard. So. What I found really interesting is game one, this is the most powerful accelerant. But mm -hmm. game two and three, I find myself taking these out. Because once you've gotten rid of your hands, you're exposed to a Tormon script, and they can take your life from the loans out. Or yep. deal with all your threats. You have no hidden information, and they have all the right choices to be made. Right. 
And also, they're a lot slower after sideboarding. People board out their threats to bring in these cards that they're hating against you. Okay. So I find that I usually take out two or three of these right. in almost every game, two and three. Well, well, while we're on the subject of uh, sideboarding, let, let's take a look at some of the bigger decks in the format. I, I mean, I've been talking today with a lot of players, and the bigger decks that they, they came into the format preparing for were Goblins, Merfolk, and then Countertop, which are I mean, fairly well represented here today. Uh, how do you plan to beat those decks post-board? Uh, Alright, so post-board, my plan is bringing in, I usually bring in an extra EE. Okay. I bring in Ancient Grudge against Goblins and Merfolk. If they bring in random hate like Sabo's Web, you have an answer, but it's also a good main because it kills Aetherball. Okay. And when you're trying to landlock them, you don't want them to have Aetherball. Right. Uh, then I bring in Ray of Revelation in case they bring in Leyline of the Void. Okay. If I believe they have Tormund's Crypt, mm -hmm. Chalice of the Void, you set it to zero and they can't crypt you. The only thing it really stops on you is Zern Orb Mox Diamond, which you're exactly. fine dealing and with that. Mox Diamond you'll play out on turn one first anyway, yeah. so you don't even worry about it. Yeah. And if, if you get the case where you already have a one drop accelerator now, uh -huh. then playing a Chalice for one is devastating. Yeah. So it's, it's pretty good. I have uh, two Ray Revelations in case they have multiple Leyland Avoids. Okay. I also have two Torment Scripts okay. in case I need Graveyard Heat. I decided to go with just more than one, even though you can transmute for it. So sometimes I want it in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Other times you'll lose your graveyard as well because they're bringing in hate for that. Right. And you'll have a backup one to go for it. Good. That's actually my same reasoning with the engineered explosives. They'll get rid of your graveyard while you EE to kill something or a board. Uh -huh. And you'll need another one to be in the game. Got it. Their confidants are in there for your control matchups and your heavy hate decks. Bringing in creatures into a deck that runs nothing but lands and ways to get lands. Yep. You run that one by you so you can board it. Excellent. You've got all these fetch lands over here that help you get it. Plus, I mean, your deck is designed to go searching yeah, for lands. Yeah, effectively. Box seven adds any mana. yeah. Uh, I found these were the most effective against Storm, which is your worst matchup. Okay. It first of all puts an early threat on, so they actually on a clock and they can't just sit back and relax. Okay. And then it also draws me to more hard threats because you can't dredge against them because your lands don't actually do much. Right. You can port and waste, but they don't care. They do most stuff in instant speed anyway. Mm -hmm. So these get you your harder answers, like Chalice of the Voids, that they just can't deal with sometimes. Okay. Uh, I worried about Extirpate, so I brought in a Curse of the Worlds. Okay. Just in case they extirpate my life from the I have that out just to keep going. Yeah. That's another Chalice. And then the last card is Smokestack. It's just another win condition. Yep. If they're playing a similar board and they can deal with my threats, then I can just make them lose every permit in order to get in there. Okay. This card is hardly ever brought in. Yeah. I don't actually recommend it. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, well, this deck seems like a, I mean, it's just a crushing grind at some point. It's a, it's a dentrition deck, and your whole goal is to limit your opponent's ability to do anything while you slowly get the ability to do whatever you want to towards the end of the game. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, Magic is a really easy game when your opponent has no decisions and you can do whatever you want, right? That's true. Great. And it's really nice when I can get them to no lands and just go score to lock them. Awesome. Just take the sigh of relief. Yeah, there's nothing quite like that feeling knowing that you're in completely in the driver's seat. Yeah. Excellent. Well, let's see, on a, on a scale of 1 to 10, about how hard would you think this deck would be to pick up and play? I mean, it, it seems like there's a lot of intricate decisions that you can make because you are playing a lot of one ofs. And I would tell any beginner or any intermediate player not to play this deck. Okay. Highly unrecommended. There are so many little intricacies to this deck, it's unbelievable. I, I lost the game because I had ridden Catacomb for a tropical instead of a forest on turn one with no board position. <laughs> and several people saw it and knew that I should have gone the forest. Yeah. And these are all high level players. So, so well, the I, thing costs too much. But with lots of practice, a deck like this can be very, very powerful in the right hands. Definitely. Excellent. So, uh, Eli, I really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us and good luck the rest of the tournament. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm.